All right. The skill we decided to perform today was irrigating a wound. The first step in the procedure is to verify the physician's order, to gather our equipment, which we have irrigating solution, a sterile irrigating container, a bath blanket, a blue pad, an emesis basin to capture the fluid in, two pairs of sterile gloves, a 30 milliliter syringe, an 18 gauge catheter tip, as well as a sterile dressing kit. After that, we are going to identify the patient using two identifiers, explain the procedure to the patient, raise the height of the bed, lower the side rails, and assemble our equipment in a fashion that's easy for us to work with. Okay, now that our equipment is all set up in the way it should be, we are going to place the bath blanket under the patient. And this is just to catch any drainage that might not be picked up by the blue pad. Now we'll place the blue pad under the patient as well. All right, now that this is placed, we are going to position the patient so that it is easy to uh, perform the procedure. So in this case, we have a patient with an abdominal wound. So it would make the most sense to position the patient on their side so that when we're irrigating, the drainage will go down into the emesis basin. We are going to position the patient using our lovely drug guidebooks. Yay, yay. So, we're going to position the patient on the side, being propped up by the books. And after we position the patient, before we perform hand hygiene, I forgot to mention that in the steps earlier, but we perform hand hygiene and then don't on clean gloves. After putting on clean gloves, we are going to remove the dressing, starting from the edges or the corners and working our way in towards the wound. We are gonna discard of the dressing into our garbage, as well as our clean gloves. All right, so the next step would be to um, open our sterile field and get our sterile gloves on. At this time, I'm also going to pour the sterile irrigating solution into the sterile container. Okay, now that our sterile gloves are on, we can take a look at the wound and do a quick assessment. So a helpful nursing mnemonic we can use is RETA, R-E-E-D-A, R for redness, the first E is for edema, second E is for ecchymosis or bruising, and D for drainage, and lastly A for approximation. So we're going to take all that consideration when looking at our wound. After we inspect our wound, I'm going to take the 30 milliliter syringe, which it is in its sterile packaging, and then maintaining sterile, sterility, 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 
I'm going to inject the sterile solution that I just poured previously. The amount of solution that I inject into the syringe is all dependent on what the physician ordered. After that, I'm going to apply my 18 gauge catheter tip, again, maintaining a sterile field, and connecting both the syringe and the catheter tip. done this way too many times and it's not hooking. Okay. Okay, so now that this is all set up, I'm just noticing that I forgot to place the emesis basin underneath where the wound is. So assistant, if you could use your non-dominant hand to place the emesis basin. And, I, and this hand is contaminated, so I can no longer use it. But yeah. I can use my right hand. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to start with the irrigation. And just a few tips when doing this, you're going to start from the cleanest area to the dirtiest. So we're gonna work from top to bottom. And we'll work our way down and then come back around and do it until either the syringe is gone, which is what the physician ordered, or the drainage coming from the wound begins to turn clear. Okay, that looks good to me. So we're going to dispose of this in the sharps container. After we have irrigated the wound, we are going to pat dry with sterile gauze that was in our sterile dressing kit. We're going to go right around the wound just to get rid of that moisture. And then just around the abdomen here where there's still some splashes, I'm going to wipe those up too. Now that the skin in the wound is dry, I'm going to apply a sterile dressing. With my sterile hand, I grab the sterile dressing and I'm going to apply it to the wound. I'm now going to use tape and tape down the dressing. If I can find the edge. Using teamwork, <laughs> we are both taping the dressing. Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> and, oh my god, I can't. Oh.
All right. The dressing is now intact on the patient's abdomen. After we do that, we are going to dispose of our gloves and all of our equipment. And then we are going to make sure the patient is comfortable, ask them if they needed anything else that we can provide, lower the height of the bed, raise the side rails, and then document. All right, so the things you'd want to document for this uh, particular procedure would be the type of dressing you used, um, first of all, the part that you actually did this procedure, um, the date, time, which you could write that on the dressing as well. With just, your initials. Yep, just so someone knows when it needs to be changed next. Um, you're going to want to document the appearance of the wound, um, the nursing mnemonic we talked about, Rita, using that would be helpful, and the patient's reaction to the procedure if they are feeling any pain. Um, do you have anything else to add? Um, I don't think so. I know we went out of order on a couple of steps, but the main things are to definitely wash your hands when you first do the procedure and also maintain a sterile field in a more proper working area for you and you, the fellow nurse that you may be working with. Thank you for watching. Thanks.